The second video on matrices looks at special matrices and concepts of equality. The previous video then introduced the definition of a matrix and some basic notation. And here we're going to start looking at what might be determined special matrices or matrices that come up a lot in engineering problem solving. We also consider the concept of equality. A reminder then, a matrix in essence is a table of numbers. The dimensions of a matrix are given by the number of rows followed by the number of columns. Here you can see that A has got three rows. I can mark them one, two, three, and five columns, one, two, three, four, five, and therefore it's defined as three by five. The notation for defining elements of a matrix, we start counting in the top left hand corner and we always give the row index first. What's a row matrix then? A row matrix is a matrix which has a single row. Here you'll see that A has just got one row, B has just got one row, C has just got one row. In this particular case, A is 1 by 2, B is 1 by 3, and C is 1 by N. In all cases, you see the row dimension is 1, and that's what you require for a row matrix. Sometimes you will hear row matrices referred to as row vectors, or sometimes even just vectors, and that's common. You need to be aware of this. What about column matrices then? A column matrix is a matrix which has a single column. And here you'll see A has just got one column, B has just got one column, and C has just got one column. So these would be column matrices. In this case, A is 2 by 1, B is 3 by 1, and C is n by 1. And again, you'll notice the shortcut or shorthand. Often, these will be denoted as column vectors or even just vectors. And I think you'll find referring to these as vectors is more common than calling them a column matrix. Some notation then for vectors. A vector has only one dimension greater than one. And therefore, it's common to denote elements using just one subscript rather than two, because one of the subscripts is superfluous. Here then, you'll see that A is given by a column matrix minus 3, 0, and I might denote this just as A1 and A subscript 2. Here, C, again, is a column matrix or a vector, and you'll notice that I've only used one subscript to denote the elements. Notation, then, for row vectors. The default for a vector is the column form. So if you say, I've got a vector, people will automatically assume that it's a column matrix. If you want it in row form, it would be more normal to specify this is a row vector, just to avoid confusion. Square matrices, then. Matrices have got two dimensions covered in the previous video, the number of rows and the number of columns. For a matrix to be square, the two dimensions have to be the same. Therefore, you've got the same number of rows as columns. Here, you'll see that B has got three rows and three columns, and therefore it's square. A has got four rows and four columns, the same number of rows as columns, and therefore it is square. Next, then, we come to a very important square matrix, the identity matrix, usually called I. The key thing first is an identity matrix must be square. It comprises zero elements except on the principal diagonal where the elements are one, and this is best done by illustration. Here you can see a two by two identity matrix. The principal diagonal is this one here. And you'll see I've got ones on the principal diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Here's a 4x4 four four identity matrix. Again, you'll see I've got 1s on the principal diagonal 
and zeros everywhere else. If you want a more formal definition for an identity matrix, it's given here at the bottom. So you'll see that i subscripts ij is zero whenever the subscripts are not equal to each other. So if little i is not equal to little j, whereas capital I subscript ij equals one when the subscripts are equal, so when i equals j. So that's the definition of an identity matrix. The standard basis set. Now this again is a very common um, form which is used often in engineering problems. And here the columns, and in fact it's equivalently the rows, of the identity matrix form the standard basis set. It's common, but again not essential, to denote these using little e subscript i. And therefore, you'll notice I've taken a 4 by 4 identity matrix, and the first column I've called e1, and that's the first standard basis set. The third column I've called e3, and that will be the third of the standard basis set. Now this is clearly for four-dimensional space, and we've got a problem here. It's important to know the underlying space dimension before you can define what you mean by EI. So for example, I've written down here at the bottom E6 transposed equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, but it could equally have been this vector here. And the reason I don't know which one it is, is because I have to define the space dimension first. How many dimensions have I got? Have I got six rows, seven rows, eight rows, or whatever? Matrix equality then. We need a mechanism for determining when two matrices A and B are considered to be equal. And here we have a definition. In order to be equal, the matrices must have the same dimensions, and they must have identical elements in all the corresponding positions. In other words, matrices A and B are equal if and only if A11 is the same as B11. A13 is the same as B13. A22 is the same as B22. A33 is the same as B33, and so on. In other words, all the corresponding coefficients have to be equal. Matrix transpose then. Transposition is an important operation, but again, it's a definition. And students need to recognize it's a definition. You just need to memorize the definition. In simple terms, transposition just swaps the indices. So i comma j becomes j comma i. Now you'll see that most easily with an example. If I define A as being equal to B transposed, that's the same as saying A I comma J equals B J comma I for all I J. So you'll see here all I've done is swap the indices. Here's an example. B, you'll see on the left, is given by this matrix and all I'm going to do is swap the indices. Now a key thing to note is if I swap the indices the diagonal does not change because that's B11, B22, B33 and so on and therefore if you look at A you'll see the diagonal is the same but the other coefficients are going to change. For example let's look at this coefficient 5. That coefficient is given by b2, comma 1. Now that's going to go into position a1, comma 2. I've swapped the positions of the indices, and therefore you see where does it appear? In the 1, 2 position. Alternatively, let's look at this 3. Where's this 3? Well, this 3 is b1, comma 3, first row and third column. And therefore, that's going to become a3, comma 1. I've swapped the positions of the indices, and you'll see it appears down here. That, therefore, is the definition of transposition. An alternative way of looking at this, if you find it easier, 
is to say that the ith column becomes the ith row. What I'll do is I'll just erase some of this and then you'll, we can show this a bit more easily if we've got some space. So let's look at the ith row of B. So for example, the first row is 1, 0, 3. And you'll notice that becomes the first column of B transposed. Alternatively, look at the third row of B and you'll see that becomes the third column of B transposed. Matrix transposition. So transposition swaps the matrix dimensions. If B was n by r, then B transposed has to be r by n. And this is obvious from the definition of swapping the indices. Here's an example then. If h is 2 minus 3, 21, and this is 3 by 1, then h transposed has to be 1 by 3. And you can see that here, where the first column of h has become the first row of h transposed. Different example. You'll notice c is 2 by 5, and therefore c transposed has to be 5 by 2. You'll see the first column of c has become the first row of C transposed. The third column of C has become the third row of C transposed, and so on. Some other examples of matrix transposition. Here's A, and you'll notice it's 3 by 2, and here's A transposed, which is now 2 by 3. And again, you'll see the pattern. The first column of A has become the first row of A transposed. And we've got the example C here as well, but I won't dwell on that. An example to try a bit more slowly. So what's the transpose of A? And all I'm going to do is take example here, I might do row to column. So the first row of A becomes the first column of A transposed. And therefore I write minus one, four, five, zero. The second column of A becomes the second column of A transposed. And therefore I can write 3, minus 12, minus 15, 0, and so on. I can now do the last two by inspection, 5, 8, 18, 3, and 7, and 104, 56, 13, and 2. Some more examples. Find the transpose of the following, and I'll just do the first, and the others you can pause the video and try by yourself. So D transposed is going to be 8, 6, 2 along the top row, minus 3, 5, 4 for the second row, and 2, 0, 0, 4, the third row. And again, I'll pass on this one, and you can pause the video and look at that one yourself. Symmetric matrices, then. This, again, is a definition. A matrix is symmetric if it's equal to its transpose. This means that if you swap the position of the indices, you have the same value. Implicitly, a matrix can only be symmetric if it's also square, because when you transpose, you, ch you swap the number of rows and columns. So if they're equal to each other, they must originally have had the same number of rows and columns. Here's an example then. You'll see G, 10, minus 2, minus 2, 6. Here it is. And when I do the transpose, you'll notice the off diagonal elements are the same. And therefore, the transpose is the same as the original matrix. Different example, B. And again, you'll notice the off-diagonal matrices, well, sorry, elements, are the same. And because these off-diagonal elements match, so in other words, B12 equals B21, or B31 equals B13, or B32 equals B23, then when I do the transpose over here, I get the same matrix. So this is called symmetric. Summary then. We've defined row and column matrices, and more commonly, these are denoted as vectors. We've defined a square matrix and an identity matrix. We've defined standard basis vectors. 
matrix equality, transposition, and symmetric matrices.